I've been expecting you for a long time. You have? Yes. Well, who, who are you? Well, I'm the keeper of the ladder. My name's George. George. The keeper of the ladder? Yes. Is everybody getting the television this way? Everybody. <laughs> I've helped them all climb in. Uh -huh. See these notches? Yeah. I've got a place for you right here. Uh-huh. Sort of starting at the bottom of the... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a funny thing. I never noticed anybody climbing in before. Oh, nobody ever notices at home, see. This happens before the program. Before the show, oh. Oh, yeah, we're not even on the air yet. Oh. <laughs> but it's almost time. Uh -huh. Oh, by the way, who's your sponsor? Uh, Chun King Chow Mein. Uh, who's your alternate sponsor? Uh, the, there, there is no alternate sponsor. They're footing the bill for the whole thing? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's what I call a game noodle company. Yeah, well, I see they always want to sponsor their very own New Year's Eve show. Aren't you a little late? No, George. See, tonight is the eve of Chinese New Year. Oh, see? Chinese. Chinese New Year. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Freeberg, yeah. you be careful in there. Television has an insatiable appetite. Choose up comedian something awful. Feeding time. Feeding time. Feeding time. Feeding time. The same time every time. Watch it, sir. <laughs> well, here we are. A few more unbelievable situation comedies. Few more westerns. Here we go, baby. Oh, taste of violence. And oh, I almost forgot. It's Sunday. Oh. It gets an educational program. He doesn't like these very much. I see. No, no, baby. Remember what Dr. Minow said. It'll make you better. It's hard for it to swallow. I'll see you around, George. Oh, no, you don't, Mr. Freeberg. Huh? No, you don't. You climb right up into that set. You're next. Yeah, but, but I... Wait just a minute. No, wait. Before you go, here's your book of instructions. Book of instructions. And an emergency whistle. Emergency whistle. And one boot. One boot? Just a little insurance with all them westerns. You know what I mean. Yeah, well, might as well be half safe. <laughs> yeah, well, here you go. Okay. Ah, come on. Oh, George, George, wait a minute. Don't, don't I get at least a little fanfare or something? One Chinese fanfare coming up. George, do I just stand here, George? I mean, does anything happen ovation wise? Good evening. I... Yes? Uh, scruples here. Uh, Sydney Scruples. Scruples? Honesty control. I see. Well, what, uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Uh... May I uh, have another look at that apparatus there? Oh, certainly. Oh. 
against a little insurance. I figure I with that plus the one boot, why I'm I... I'm uh, sorry to have to do this to you. Uh, do what to me, mister? Audience reaction has been technically... questions? Strange. Yeah, well, I advise you to worry less about applause machines and more about the way people are introduced around here. Did you check that fanfare I got? A guy hits a gong, a ooga it went, and besides, nobody's even mentioned my name yet or anything. Well, I'll, I'll look into it right away, Mr. Uh, Mr. Um, Freebird. Uh, Mr. Uh, um, uh, uh, whatever you said. Yeah. Free, Freebird. <coughs> I think it's about time I welcomed you to the Chun King Chow Mein Hour. Uh, hour. An average American family, just like the family on your street, on your block, in your city, and yet, in their heart of hearts, what do they really know about Chinese food? What's to know? You eat it, you're hungry an hour later. Truth or fable? Tonight we plan to find out. These people are being served delicious Chun King chow mein. They'll start eating it now, and we'll check back with them at the end of the program. May I inquire as to the length of the broadcast? One hour. You got yourself a deal, Sam. Stan. Stan, Sam, so what's the big deal, Charlie? That's, that's sort of embarrassing. Nobody can remember my name around here, evidently. Yeah, I seen that they couldn't. You, you seen that they, that they could say, uh, I wonder if you'd mind uh, painting me a little sign with my name on it, then we could uh, hang it up somewhere and people would know, know who I was then. Oh, fine, fine, glad to do it, yeah. Appreciate it. Sure. No, no trouble? No. Television is a hazardous enough medium as it is without people forgetting your name, you know what I mean? Here one season, gone the next. Right. I don't even know what I'm doing here at all, but uh, it's a rule, you know, somebody snapped the white barber's cloth and said, you're next. So here I am. Comedian number 4,362. Grist for the mill. Is this what you wanted? No. No, not exactly. Thanks very much, anyhow. <clears throat> when painter fails to identify you, press emergency button. I don't see any emergency uh, uh, button around here. Well, sure not. I ain't painted it yet. Oh. You know, I don't know much about art, but I know what I like. Will you just paint the button, fella? Just paint the button. Appreciate it. Push it. sometime. Thank you. It was nothing. No, it was something. You don't think I don't appreciate it. Well, here we go. <clears throat> A proclamation. The name of that guy with the glasses and one boot is Stan Freeberg. Glass. Did I say it was finished? All right. 
In summation, the Chung King Chow Mein people, having paid through the nose for all this nonsense thus far, are like crazy beside themselves that he be positively identified, so that whatever is going to happen will happen pretty quick now, without no more nonsense about painters and magic buttons and all things like that, the end. Listen, I've been having a terrible time in here. Nobody seems to know my name, and I thought I was going to get a nice introduction here, and all I got was one Chinese girl in shower clogs with a kind of strange shoulder pads. I see. Here. You said you wanted to go at a leisurely pace. Well, maybe not that, that leisurely. You know? Then what do you want? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, sort of a nice, big, lavish introduction. That's what you want. Well, it'd be nice. All right. Blow your whistle. back. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Greber, that's not the name. F goes here in it. F-R-E-B-E-R-G is how it uh, goes. Name-wise, uh, uh, that's better. And allow us to impart the knowledge that this show can start without a proper introduction of the star of this production. He's the principal attraction and to get on with the action, let us you had in mind? Uh, not exactly, no. <laughs> you, you're really swinging tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, never mind the jokes. Just get me down from here, okay? Oh, you want to come down? I would like that a lot, yes. Well, blow your whistle. Mr. Freeberg? Yes? A uh, Floyd Tremble. Commercial control. Uh-huh. We were wondering what was holding up the first commercial on Chung King. Well, I, I've been so busy getting myself identified here, I haven't had a moment. But you are going to do it now. Well, I, I really wasn't going to bother with one. I mean, we just did a big, lavish opening. Well, the rule is that you're supposed to do and... an opening commercial. Well, I thought I might just blow the opening commercial altogether or lump it with the middle <laughs> Oh! I've been waiting for that. Now, we had an interdepartmental meeting on lumping. I'll bet you did, yeah. And my people feel that television viewers have been conditioned from the cradle to the grave to expect three separate commercials. I, I understand. That way they have three little spaces in the show where they can go make a sandwich or... They can whatever. do whatever they want in the little spaces. My concern is that the little spaces are there. The beginning, the middle, and the end. Fine. Well, uh, Mr. Tremble, I'm certainly sure. with uh, expect. Yes. And should we see? Yes. Three. Separate should little. We... Yes. Beginning, beginning, middle, and end. Yes. That's we made right. that point. Now we well, we'll look into it right away, Mr. Tremble. Remember, the beginning, the middle, and the end. 
Mr. Freeberg? And now I would like... Yes? Frank Simile, commercial control. But I just put a man... I'm in his assistant. When one of us goes down, another one is there to take his place. My assistant... Sam Thermofax. My assistant... Tom Triplicate. Triplicate, yes. Yeah. Well... And to draw a parallel, all we have to do is yell. And another man will come and take our place as well. Vice presidents are we, but expendable, you see. We're a highly multiplying type of personnel. We can get on with the celebration. Abramowitz Commercial Control. Control, yes. I would have been here sooner, but I couldn't get a cab. Uh -huh. Now, about the opening commercial. commercial funny I was thing, Mr. Abramowitz. Yes, I was but just about to do funny. it. I, I uh, understand. Yes. No, I understand. I understand, I understand your concern. I would yes. be grateful to you if yes. you do it. We'll take care of it. You bet we will. Now, what's the deal about you not doing the opening commercial? I mean, uh, have you got some sort of a... Um, uh, metal block? No, no, no. Metal I was block? Gonna say that, huh? I was just wondering and curious as why the excruciating delay is regards to getting into it and getting it over with and getting on with the show. I don't believe we've met, madam. Oh, I'm Gladys Bomberg, you're up to you. Mm -hmm. I'm majoring in home ec, and I was mildly curious. Yeah, well, I am determined to get the Chinese New Year number out of the way before I do the opening commercial. So let's just not worry about it, dear, okay? <laughs> we'll do it by and by. Well, I won't be here. I'm going out to dinner with friends. Oh, then you mean you'll, you'll miss it when I finally uh, get around to doing it there. That's kind of the way it shapes up, yeah. Yeah. Is uh, that the product you're holding there? Chun King Chow Mein, yeah. Mm, kind of a tall can. Yeah, well, it's actually two cans taped together, you see. Mm, I see. And uh, what's the point of that? Well, if you've ever eaten ordinary canned Chow Mein, it probably wasn't too crisp. Not too crisp, yeah. no. So Chun King invented this thing called a divider pack, you see. Vegetables in one can, sauce and chicken in the other. You just open them up, pour them together, and heat it. Oh, I see. It. The vegetables are on the top. Huh? No, the vegetables are on the bottom. They don't really follow you. Well, perhaps these Chinese folk singers can explain. Chinese folk singers? You got the vegetables on the bottom. Chow mein sauce on the top. You, you got the vegetables on the bottom. Chow mein sauce on the top. Two cans taped together, cans taped together. That is known as a divider pack. Chun King Chow Mein means two supper cans. What do you mean two supper cans? We mean two cans in a stack. Two cans in a stack. Two cans. Chun King Chow Mein. Hey, those guys are pretty good. What do they call themselves? How do you like the Chun Kingston trio? Can you get away with that? Search me. Hey, why don't you try this tonight? No, I told you I'm going out with friends. Oh, that's a pity, yeah. But I'll give it a whirl tomorrow night. Good girl. Now, how about the opening commercial? We've just done it. How bizarre. Mm -hmm. Speaking of bizarre, be sure and look for the Chun King Oriental Food Bazaar next time you're in your supermarket. You sneaky little devil. 21 different Chinese products. Water chestnuts, bean sprouts, bamboo. Don't press. We'll see how I like this, then we'll talk, talk about, about the, the rest. rest. Okay? Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> Change of pace and uh, more of the same. Well, I might. Mr. Freeberg! Yes? Mr. Freeberg. Hey, telegram. Thanks very much. It's from the sponsor. For heaven's sake, open the other door. Will do. Say, it reminds me. What did you have for lunch today? Chow mein. What kind of chow mein? Chicken chow mein. Good boy. Yes, sir. Yes? 
Yeah, I'll take care of it right away. Oh, boy. Yes, sir. What kind of chicken chow mein? Chung King chicken chow mein, sir. Okay. Okay. Good boy. Thank you. Thanks very much. It was nothing. No, it was something, and don't think I don't appreciate it. Going down? Thank you. It was nothing. No, it was something, and don't think I don't appreciate No, I was just talking to him. tell me from children's control. I want to talk to you. Oh, I can't talk to you right now. I'm trying to do a television show, you see. That's what I want to talk to you about. About television? Yes. I think the old set could stand a little revamping. It could, eh? Trust me, Sonny. Say, I like your style. You're a regular knee-high Newton minnow. Newton who? Minnow, the chairman of the FCC. What night is he on? No, no, he, he's the one who made that big speech uh, about... Uh, <clears throat> wrong speech. There we go. A big speech about how television was a vast wasteland and needed to improve itself as a medium. Well, I don't know about Mr. Minnow, but I need a little survey among my schoolmates. Uh-huh, well, let's have it. 26 out of 30 children polled said TV was a vast playground. Mm-hmm. Well, what do the kids think that television could do to improve itself? I've got a little list. So I see, yes. Well, let's hear your complaints. Maybe I can help you. Well, the kids felt TV should not be afraid to experiment. Have less violence, fewer westerns, not so many old movies. Hold it, hold it. Uh, we'll take your list one at a time. Come on. Here we go. Up here now. You, you don't want so many old movies, is that right? That's right. Fine. Well, I have a machine here that's compressed all the old movies into one. Now, take a look here. Ready? Yes. Here we go. White man, lie. But Eddie and me, don't you see? We're a team. Do you want to know what we're fighting for? I'll tell you what we're fighting for. For the right to eat hot dogs. And boo the Dodgers. Take me home, George. I'm having one of my headaches. But I'm an old man. I, I haven't operated for years. Did anyone ever tell you that you had a freckle right on the end of your nose? White man, lie. Champ, listen to me, champ. Ruthie's here. Oh, fool. You're surprised I speak your language, huh? Every time you're up there, Fred, a little piece of me dies. Act as if nothing were wrong. I'm a G-man. Your Majesty is too kind. Why, Miss Baxter, you're, you're beautiful. White man, lie. That crazy kid, he knocked me out and flew the plane himself. There we go, okay? 
Yeah, now I don't have to watch all those old pictures. All those old pictures, yeah. Here we go. Well, uh, list-wise, uh, what's next uh, with the complaints? Better commercials, better music. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. What do you mean, better music? Well, we either get Home on the Range or The Twist. Yeah. How about more classical music? Progressive jazz, opera, Broadway show songs. Yeah, but wait a minute. You can't just shove it down people's throats overnight. You have to go slowly. Maybe we could experiment and put all those different types of music into one popular program, you know, be more palatable to people, probably. Well, how would that work? Well, here. Blow this. Fit by the beat of it, he hopped upon a hippo's back with a grin, he went into his stance. Singing from the Acabec, he rebob said, You stop, you ain't exactly on the back beat. Could you sing along with that? You should live so long. Now, here's a song that brings back a million memories. Mother and dad, sister and brother, too, can sing along with this one. Remember, it's done by our little sweetheart, Diana Flass. guest Francis Osborne leads us in the ride of the Valkyrie by the late great Dick Wagner. <laughs> next on your little list? Well, let's see. More believable situation comedies. Mm -hmm. More stimulating discussion shows. Right. Less irritating commercials. Uh, I beg your pardon? 
Why do so many commercials have to be so annoying? Well, that's what Mr. Minow wanted to know. Uh, what do you people think about that? Do you think television commercials could be less irritating? Well, I have the feeling that television critics on the whole are far too critical of commercials. Mrs. Edna St. Louis, Missouri, what do you think? Oh, yes, yes, I, I agree. Uh, some of the most beautiful and tasteful things in the world are done in television oh, yeah. commercials. Mm, absolutely. Also, some of your best writing being done today is by your copywriters. No doubt about uh, that. For sure. example, there's that beautiful line that comes to mind. Don't broadcast bad breath. I mean, that really has a lovely yes, it ring does. to it. Charming. Don't you just love it? I love it. I love it. The old favorites are the best, of course. Do you love it? I do love it. It has a lyrical quality about it. And, of course, from an artistic standpoint, the little circles radiating out from the mouth mm -hmm. like radio waves mm -hmm. are, are quite inspiring to look mm -hmm. at. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, another favorite of mine, although it's a different product, is uh, don't let romance fade, fade, fade away. Oh, I love it. Yes. I love it. The girl breathes on the boy and he disappears. Mm. Reminiscent, I think, of mm. some of Faith Baldwin's better works, the love affair coming to an end. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. I think that same commercial mm. had a lot of qualities of some of your better abstract paintings. Oh, yeah. Pictorially, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to be able to watch in your living room. The word food sliding down between the teeth, uh. the F. O-O-D, disappearing mm. into the crevices there. Now, now I think that's an outstanding contribution to society. Here, here. I'll defend it. It's yeah. beautiful. Oh, yes. I'm well, teeth-wise, I couldn't agree more. I think if the world were to end tomorrow and centuries from now a future civilization found one thing from our society, I, I think I'd want them to find the film and the word food slipping down between the teeth as Miss Missouri so mm. uh, beautifully described it there. I, I think I'd want that to be found as a record for what we stood for believe me. Mm, absolutely. Well, I'm sure we could go on all night recalling beloved television commercials that have found a place in our teeth, uh, in our hearts, but we must conclude now on the optimistic note that advertising which has kept within the boundaries of good taste, the uh, powerful perspiration glands. The hammers in the head. The living underwear. The liver bile. Yes. All these have given people something stimulating, especially if they're eating dinner in front of the set and has therefore made a genuine contribution. Thank you and good night. That was just for fun, wasn't it? Nobody really thinks that way. Well, don't count on it. Somebody back on Madison Avenue must or we wouldn't be up to our sinus cavities in those kind of commercials. Does everybody in advertising think that way? Well, half of us are trying to make commercials more entertaining. The other half are still brushing as usual. Well, that takes care of more stimulating conversation and irritating commercials. Fine. Well, what's next on your knee-high Nielsen report? Well, now I... What's that? This? This is one of the most important things in television. What is it? I haven't the vaguest idea. Nobody's ever been able to figure out what the purpose of it is. But you see it on every television show. Now, you see there? Gee, that was interesting. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and now, at last, we can get on with the celebration of Chinese New Year's Eve. Wait a minute. We didn't finish my list of complaints. I'm sorry, dear. I've done my best, really. But I, you promised. I know, but we just haven't got time to go on with the list because I've got to get into the Chinese New Year number, and I'm sure that you understand. And now, without any further uh, ado, uh, <coughs> all righty, what's next on your little list? Well, the kids felt television could be more educational and informative. Educational and informative. Hold it right there. Did you know that I had an album out based on American history? No. Yes, come here. There's things in here you just can't find in the average history book. For example, in 1626, Manhattan Island was sold by the Indians for $24 worth of junk jewelry. What was the name of the man who bought it? Peter Minuet. Wrong. His name was Tishman. Look here. Seldom as history recorded such a phenomenal land transaction, that which took place on a little island in the Hudson River.
Okay, Chief, I think I got a live one for you. Dutchman, now when he gets here, let me do all the talking, all right? Mm. Okay, here he is now. Come in. Say, that's pretty hard buffalo hide you got here on this teepee. I like to bust my knuckles. Yeah, well, just so he didn't bust his pockets, eh, Chief? Mm. <laughs> Tishman's my name, Peter Tishman. And this here is Chief White Cloud. Uh, what can we do for you, sir? Well, I seen your listing in the paper here. For sale, Iceland, exclamation point, ideal for summer festival. Gorgeous view, spell VU, running water. Now, uh, wait a minute. What is that running water bit? But my wife, brother, he go with Ireland. Oh, yeah. Spacious trees, wall-to-wall -wall grass, room for pool. What's pool? It's like snooker. Oh. Well, that's it. Now, if you're in the market for an island, friend, you couldn't go wrong, believe me. What's the asking price? Oh, uh, you give us... Uh, let me handle this, will you, Chief? <laughs> now, a beautiful piece of property like this couldn't let it go for a nickel less than $32 worth of junk jewelry. What, $32 for a crummy piece of undeveloped property like this? I'm going to see you around. Yeah, make it $29.50. Go away. Look, I don't like to haggle, Pete. Make it 28 and a quarter. I... Come on. Now, wait a minute. Uh, Chief, when I give you the signal, bring on the Indians. Right. Now, look, Pete, baby, can't you see the possibilities? Step outside here. Look around you. Sure, it's a barren piece of wasteland now. <laughs> sure, it don't look like much. But someday... This little footpath is going to echo with the sound of dancing feet. Why, they're going to hang a sign right over there. And it's going to say, Broadway. Yeah. This way, Mr. First Nighter. Put on your top hat, white feather and tails. Paint up your face, says you reds and you pales. Put on your beaded goods. We're gonna do the woods. Tap dance up the hills and down the dale. Remember, someday, this hall will be Murph. Yes, sir, right here on Broadway. Corner 51st. Yes, sir. You'll be a vital part of all the terribly smart set. In your top hat, white feather and tail. your penthouse and look at the view mix with a show folk and park avenue yes sir so gay and so aloof name dropping on the rooftop drinking champagne by the pair in your top hat white feather and tails say that was a nice number you kids get a pretty good sound out of them moccasins. Mm, yes, sir, considering they were tap dancing on dirt, too. Well, I'm going to see you. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Make it 25 even, we'll toss in the Bronx. No, I couldn't possibly see my way clear. We throw in Staten Island. You hear that? Is that a generous Indian? You'll have Manhattan, the Bronx, and Staten Island, too. Hello? Yeah, Dick. Mm -hmm. If we use any more, we'll have to pay a royalty, huh? All right, sweetie, we'll knock it off. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll give you $24. So, but none of that cash stuff. The chief's wife wants strictly junk jewelry. Mmm, baubles, bangles, bright, shiny beads. Yeah, hold it, baby, will you? You're laying yourself wide open for another phone call. Okay, it's a deal. Here you go. You're lucky the price wasn't no higher. I never carry more than $24 in junk jewelry. Nice quality. Life flip. All right, man. Pack up those trees and let's get out of here. What? Strike the forest. Wait, wait a second. Where are you going with my trees? What do you think? You bought a furnished <laughs> island? You mean all those trees was in part? Yes. Laugh on you. Old island solid concrete. <laughs> Nothing grow except in little square place in middle of island. But how am I going to get people to live on a solid concrete island? Who would want to? Nice place to visit, but, but you, you wouldn't, wouldn't want, want to, to live, live here. here. Yeah. I guess you're right. Whoop. <sighs> Was that the way it really happened? Trust me. Gee, I like that so much I'd like to hear the rest of the album. You would, eh? Say, you've been so nice, 
I think maybe I'll take care of one more thing on your little list. So what's next? Less violence. Less violence, check. Walk this way, my dear. There we go. Now, this is one of television's most popular killers, Mike Mazurki. Mike, I'd like to have you meet Ginny Tew. How do you do, Mr. Mazurki? Any dame that's a friend of Freeberg's is a friend of mine. Uh -huh. Uh, Ginny uh, made a little uh, survey among her classmates, and one of her complaints concerns you. Oh, yeah? Like what, for instance? I could do with a little less violence, thanks. Me too. I hate violence. You, you do? do? You realize between my old movies on The Late Late Show and a TV gangster series, I knock off about 25 and two-thirds people a week all by myself? Huh. Or projected over in a one-month period, 85 and two-thirds persons. Yeah, well, I can see at the end of this season that uh, really adds up there. Now, tell me, Mike, you enjoy your work? Not at all, Stan. Is that right? I'm really a gentle man. I can imagine. I wish I could do something else on television. Like what, for example? Flower arranging. Flower arranging? Yeah. Let me show you the kind of a show I'd like to do. Hi there, ladies. Well, here it is. Oh, excuse me. Well, here it is, that time of the year again, when one dinner party after another can be so trying. But it doesn't have to be, especially in the flower arranging department. Here's how you can make a simple but effective centerpiece that will be the talk of your set for weeks to come. Simple? You bet. Even a man around your house can manage this one. Here's a man who has never had no experience with flowers at all whatsoever. Isn't that not correct, sir? That is correct. Starting with seven long stem <coughs> yellow chrysanthemums, we stick them into this frog thing in the bottom of the bowl. Next, just a suggestion a maiden hair fern in the middle of the flowers as a lovely understatement. And now, sir, I'm going to give you a chance to arrange the maiden hair fern amongst the mumps. Well, if you place your maiden hair fern around your mumps. Hey, in the middle, I said. Oh, but don't you see, if you frame your mums around the edge... Don't bruise the ferns! You get this lovely sweeping line, Hey, watch sir. what you're sticking them ferns there, Charlie, in the middle. Fern-wise, I like them on the outside. In the middle, I said. Outside. Middle. Outside. Middle. Outside! People, 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 please, violence! Well, I don't care. Violence? Supposed to be a lovely understatement. And look what he done to my mums. Yes, terrible, terrible. Well, thanks very much for coming by, Mike. Compliments yeah. of Mazurki's Garden Club. Oh, well, <clears throat> thank you. That's very nice. And Here, uh, take the ferns, no, too. No, 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 no care for the mom, for the ferns. Take would, the ferns. I would love to have the ferns. <laughs> I tried for less violence, and it backfired. Yeah, I hope you don't get into trouble with your sponsor. No, they more or less resigned themselves to anything goes tonight, you know. They sound like a pretty game group. I'll tell you how game they are. Come here. These three artificial chrysanthemums, that cost you at least five ninety-five in the store, but Chun King will send them to you and toss in two feathery ferns to boot for a buck fifty. How much would the feathery ferns cost me in the store? Oh, I don't know. Here, be my guest. Thank you. You're welcome. If you decide to spring for some Chun King, uh, just send the label in along with a dollar and a half, and Chun King will send you your three artificial chrysanthemums, complete with feathery ferns. Send it to Chun King, Duluth, Minnesota. Yeah. You mean a label off the can? Yeah, either the can or any of the frozen products. You know. Does Chun King make frozen products, too? Do they make frozen products? Two. Now, you see here? That's a kind of funny freezer, 
isn't it? It's a piano freezer for people with small apartments, see? Let's see if the cold air hurts the tone any. Okay. It's okay. Okay? It's delicious. They make frozen chicken chow mein, shrimp chow mein, beef chop suey, egg foo young, sweet and sour pork, egg rolls, fried rice and a can these style Chicken chow mein, shrimp chow mein, beef chop suey, egg foo young, sweet and sour pork, egg rolls, fried rice and a Company and what to fix you don't know. C H I N K U N G. How's that? That spells chin kung fu is. Hold it. That spells what? All right, goes down here like this, and the U goes down here. That's the way. See, a sponsor wise, that's better. That spells chun king who is happy to bring you this show. Oh, Stan? Yes? Is that stuff really any good? Any good? It's delicious. Hey, how do they do that? By using only the freshest vegetable. And they are frozen that way to assure crispness. Contains less cholesterol, which is something you might keep in mind. Chicken chow mein, shrimp chow mein, beef chop suey, egg foo young, sweet and sour pork, egg rolls, fried rice, and a brand new frozen dinner for three. Containing several of the aforementioned things, plus three genuine fortune cookies and an oriental tea bag. So next time you're shopping, be sure you take home some exotic chunking frozen food. Your heart out, Fred Astaire. Gee, you're a beautiful dancer. You women are all alike. All right, what else do they want to know about? Well, all the kids are interested in the space age. And Hold it right there. How would you like to meet an actual astronaut from another planet? With an antenna on his head and everything? With an antenna on his head and everything. Ooh, I like that. Are you an earth creature? I am. You ain't gonna eat me, are you? Oh, of course, I'm not going to eat you. I'm Stan Freebird. How do I know you're Stan Freebird? Well, you just have to take my word for it, sir. Now, tell us your name and where are you from? My name is Orville. I'm from the moon. Well, it's always nice to talk to somebody from out of town. <laughs> you're Freebird. Yes. Uh, tell us one thing. Uh, why do you wear that antenna on your head? Give me that again. Uh, why do you wear that antenna on your head? <clears throat> because my landlord won't let me put it on the roof. Sheesh. Any more idiotic questions, buddy? That's it. Where have I landed, anyhow? You've landed on the Chun King Chow Main Hour. You mean I've overshot the twilight zone? I'm afraid so, yes. Yeah. Pity. Well, no matter. While I'm here, I'll make a few observations for a newspaper on the moon. All right. And what is the name of the newspaper, please? The Sun. The Evening Sun? No, we have the sun in the morning and the moon at night. Yes. Well, why have you come <clears throat> to our planet tonight, sir? I've come to arrange for a cultural exchange with your government. Take me to your leader. Well, I'm afraid he's rather busy at the moment. Well, I... Thought I could drop by the White House. We could break green cheese together. Oh, <laughs> you have dinner with the president? I'm afraid that's ridiculous. Well, I could eat at the card table with Carolyn. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings there. I don't eat very much. No, I'm sure something, something can be worked out there. Which of our cultures would you like to take back to the moon? Well, I have a little list here. You too, eh? Oh, dude? Oh, nothing. Never mind. <laughs> 
I want to help you with the list there? It would help me immensely, yes. Okay, fine. Here we go. <clears throat> right ahead. Here's the list, fine. We should like a little rock and roll. Yeah. A couple of gang wars. Yeah. The back of a bus. Outdoor advertising. Movie fan magazines. And an autographed picture of that man with all eight of his sinus cavities draining. Very good. I see you've picked the best of our cultures. Well, what are you going to give us in exchange for all these wonderful things? We'll give you a nuclear weapon. I, uh, <laughs> I'm afraid we already have a nuclear weapon. Not like ours. Ours is terrific. Well, what's, uh, what's so special about yours? Ours doesn't work. I can see that's uh, an improvement, all right. If it doesn't work, uh, what do you do with it? All the nations on the moon get together and we hit it with a stick. You what? You hit it with a stick? That's right. And then what happens? Paper hats and toys fall out. Mm -hmm. and, and then what do you do? And we all put on the paper hats and we play with the toys. And then what? And then we all go home. Do you have some special name for this type of festivity? Yes. We call it progress. Nicely put. Well, uh, we have a unusual festivity on Earth every year at this time. Do you have some special name for it? Yes. Chinese New Year. Oh, I thought we'd never get to it. Neither did I. Neither did I. There we go. Now, in honor of Chinese New Year's Eve, we proudly present the Chinese New Year's Eve number. In honor of Chinese New Year's Eve. Music! Curtain! Wait a just a moment. Oh. I wish that you could see this. The girls are coming down the great big pole. Oh, here, here we go. Here. Now. There they go. That's it. All the girls are coming down the door. So much for the Chinese New Year's Eve number. And now the Chun King Chow Main Hour. Hour. You ate Chun King Chow Main one hour ago, is that correct? That is correct. But thanks to its full body nutrition and staying power, now, one hour later, you're not hungry, right? Wrong. Wrong. You're hungry? Believe me, I could eat it. And that's why you should always buy two cans of Chun King. One for now, one for when you're hungry an hour later. And now Mr. Freeberg, you call that a closing commercial back there? Oh, Mr. Tremble, why, yes, I thought it was nice and subtle, nothing too A little bit pushy. too subtle, if you ask me. You haven't even mentioned any of the other products packed by the Chongqing Corporation. Uh -huh. You mean, for example, like uh, Gino's Pizza, Nokomis Wild Rice, Wilderness Pie Fillings, not to mention Living Earth, mm. those kind of products there you had in mind. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Ah, but all the same, you haven't given the people a jingle that they can walk out of the living room humming. A jingle, you say? Yes, like those what's we call it twins sing about. That's what you'd like? Yes. Fine. And now... The Chun King Twins. I represent the chow mein sauce in one can. And I'm the vegetables in the other. Yes, but that's not Chun King. Two cans side by side. It's one on top of the other. I see. That's easily fixed. Now, which one of you would like to go on top of the... Uh, I think we better do it this way. And here we go. Double your pleasure, oh 
for a game with chicken chow, chicken chow, chicken chow made. It's so delicious, you can't abstain from chicken chow, chicken chow, chicken chow made. Beans, sprouts, water, chestnuts, and bamboo shoots on the bottom. Sauce on the top. Put the two together and serve a chop chop. Here we go! Look for the chunky cans in the stack. Call divider, divider, divider pack. That's what you had in mind? Yeah. One Thank minute. you. One uh, allow me. <laughs> about to take care of it. We'd like to thank the sponsors of Maverick for relinquishing their time this week so we might bring you the Chun King Chow Main Hour. Maverick will be seen next week over most of these same ABC stations, okay? You whistled? Oh, what the... A fortune cookie, yes. Read it. All right. You have just watched the Chun King Chow Main Hour, starring... Stan Freeberg. Thank you. Produced and directed by Jack Donahue. Original music and script by... Stan Freeberg. Production designed by Saul Bass. Music arranged and conducted by Billy May. Uh, choral direction by Judd Conlon. And a large cast, too numerous to mention, like if you mentioned Sterling Holloway. Who? Sterling Holloway. Max Mellinger, Shep Mink, and Naomi Lewis, Howard McNair, Patty Regan, Francis Osborne, Ginny Chu, Gloria Wood, Peter Leeds, June Foray, Byron Kane, Mike Mazurki, Maurice Kelly, Maxine Gates, Artie Johnson, Jesse White, Billy Butcher, Jimmy Gonzalez, Bill Reeve, and Glenn Turnbull. Why, then you'd have to mention everybody, wouldn't you? I suppose. Assistant Director, Jules Seidman. Animation Coordination, Bill Hertz. Animation by Pantomime Pictures. Associate Producer, Donna. Freebird. Produced by. Freebird. Limited. And made by that wonderful crew. Production coordinator Bob Dahlquist. Help, I am being held captive in a Paramount videotape production. Thank you. It was nothing. No, it was something. I don't think I don't appreciate it. Here we go. Stop!